Hello everyone and welcome back to the Web3 Programming Masterclass. In this lecture, we are discussing what is Web3 and why is it so important. Before we jump into this video, check out our Kickstarter that's happening now, Hello Coding 4.0. Oh, you can pledge and get tons of content all about blockchain and more. Web3 is the new internet. It's been developing since 2010. Currently, we are still in Web 2.0, but Web 3.0 is developing. The web began with 1.0. This is when the internet began back around the 80s, where you had static read-only web pages, so few people could interact with the pages and a few people made the pages but anyone could access published content so web 1.0 was a breakthrough and the web revolutionized the entire world by the year 2000 we had web 2.0 which is where we are now and we have greater user interaction and participation in websites that are part of web 2.0 so we have a lot of social media and a lot of data coming in and out, a lot of new images, text everywhere. So there's a lot more data, a lot of more interaction with Web 2.0. There are a lot more users as well, and a lot more creators. But Web 2.0 is not perfect. It has some shortcomings. For example, we have these powerhouses that are centralized entities that have a lot of the power and control. So there's a lot of monopoly happening. For example, companies like Facebook, Google, Amazon, these big companies, they control a lot of the web. They control your data, what they do with the data, how they use it, how they analyze it, who they sell it to, where they give it out, how it's protected, is it secure, is it being hacked. They control your data, they control what you do on the web, they control a lot of the market, a lot of the money that's being handled on the web. So this is one shortcoming of Web 2.0. You have these few companies with a lot of power and this can lead to problems like the global financial crisis of 2008 and these companies being able to affect politics and more. So Web 3.0 is developing to address some of the issues of Web 2.0. Web 3.0 is a decentralized web that uses the latest generation of internet apps and services. Web 3.0 is powered by distributed ledger technology. The most common type of distributed ledger technology is the blockchain. There are other types of distributed ledger technologies as well, but blockchain is the most common one currently. So you can say that Web 3.0 is powered by blockchain technology. Web 3.0 connects your data in a centralized way. It also allows you to access features of the blockchain like smart contracts, transactions, cryptocurrencies. Your data is not stored in centralized repositories and there's no central entity because Web 3.0 is handled by the blockchain, which is not a central entity. It's a decentralized entity, meaning that there's no one company or person controlling it. It's upheld by the network of users. So that is Web 3.0. Web 3.0 has tons of benefits like increased user trust, privacy, and transparency. It's a lot harder to hack a software built with blockchain technology. Blockchain technology is inherently more secure than regular software or a regular website. As well, Web 3.0 is more transparent because the blockchain is transparent. Anytime there's a transaction done on the blockchain, it's recorded and it's public. So you can see exactly what address made what transaction. So it's transparent and you can follow where a token is going to what address. You can follow where a cryptocurrency is going to what address. You can follow events that are happening. As well, Web 3.0 allows you to use self-executing smart contracts. Smart contracts make up the core of the Ethereum blockchain, which is the number one blockchain for decentralized app or dApp development. So these smart contracts allow you to build out tools and software that use blockchain technology. So you can eliminate the requirement for third parties. For example, on my website, instead of accepting payments via a credit card where the credit card fees take up a lot of the money or making a transaction overseas, 
there's a lot of fees involved in that because you have third parties, you have middle parties. But with smart contracts, you can send the funds directly from one party to another without that third party. So the money is sent faster and it is also sent cheaper because there's no third party. And that's just one example of a smart contract. You can use smart contracts not just for transactions, but also to represent an entity. Like it can represent a bank with all the bank fields and bank functions. It can represent a school. It can represent a store. A smart contract has a lot of power. And smart contracts are self-executing. So once they are put onto the blockchain, you can trust that they can execute automatically. As well with Web 3.0, artificial intelligence will help make Web 3.0 more intelligent and able to process more information so you can deliver smarter user experiences. And again, Web 3.0 addresses problems with Web 2.0. For example, in Web 2.0, there's no room for competition. The big companies like Amazon, they have the most money, they have all the data, they have the best talent in terms of developers, and they have the most computing power. They have the best computers, the best data houses, the best data in the cloud storage. So how is the little guy, the little developer, supposed to compete with these huge companies? If you want to start your own company, it's very hard to compete. These big companies, they'll manipulate. They will just steal your ideas. They will just make another copy of your idea. They will edge you out of the competition. It's hard to compete with big companies as a developer and in general as anyone in an industry. Well, thanks to Web 3.0, it helps you to have a decentralized web where the power is more spread out. So we are able to leverage Web 3.0 benefits. As well, the rise of these big tech companies leads to global income disparity because these big tech companies, they want to build out projects as quickly as possible with as cheap as possible. We also don't own our data in Web 2.0. Your data is constantly being used for tons of means, whether to spy on you or to advertise to you, to get you to buy more products or to just make profit off you or your data just being sold or just being hacked because identity theft and data leaks happen all the time. Every day as we speak right now, data is being leaked. Emails are being sent out with the passwords. Emails are being leaked. Everything's being leaked. So. Web 2.0 is not very secure, so Web 3.0 is here to address some of those lack of security and privacy problems with Web 2.0. Even the government collects private data from big companies. News feeds are optimized to take your attention and to make you addicted. You have these social media companies, again, monopolizing, spying, making you addicted. Election tampering, we have no say in the governance of these massive systems. So these companies, they have so much power that maybe you don't even see day to day, but it's there under the surface. It's just disguised as a fun website. But these companies, they have more power than some countries, but yet we don't vote in how they are optimized. We don't have any say in how these companies are run. We are just the users of their product. So again, with Web 2.0, we have very little power as the consumer, as the website visitor. We don't own our data. We are also being manipulated. And we have little say in how these governmental organizations or these companies are running. So Web 3.0, again, is built to address some of these issues and make the web more transparent and more decentralized, so there's less power to huge companies. Artificial intelligence needs to improve because that way we can combine a decentralized autonomous organization with decentralized artificial intelligence, so we can have resources and autonomous decision making combined to have a more powerful system. So as Web 3.0 develops, it still is being developed with a lot more tools, but you can still use it, it's just not fully developed yet and fully integrated into the internet because Web 2.0 is still here. But with Web 3.0, we'll have more benefits and we'll be able to combine it with AI to have a more powerful system. With Web 2.0 as well, there's a lot of data loss, a lot of data being stolen, but also in general, what if data is accidentally deleted? How do we address data that we need to be permanent? This could be personal data, this could be historical data or scientific data, medical records, 
some data is lost on accident or on purpose, and that's because of Web 2.0. But with Web 3.0, we are able to address data loss issues and prevent data loss because everything that's put on the blockchain is permanent. With Web 3.0, the internet is shared online and governed by a collective. It's not owned by centralized entities. So there's less monopoly. With Web 3.0, you can build different projects like an app or a dApp or a decentralized website that is open source and profitable, community governed and censorship resistant. Let's talk about how the Web 2.0 stack compares to the Web 3.0 stack. So for Web 2.0, for computing, you might use Amazon EC2 and Heroku, whereas for Web 3.0, you would use the Ethereum blockchain or Truebit. For storage, for Web 2.0, you would use some kind of database like Amazon S3, Google Cloud. For Web 3.0, there are alternatives like StoreJ and IPFS. For Web 2.0 external data, you would use third-party APIs, but for Web 3.0, you can use oracles and other options. To monetize on Web 2.0, you can use ads, subscriptions, and in-app purchases, and more, but for Web 3.0, you would use the token model, utilizing cryptocurrencies. For Web 2.0 payments, you use PayPal, Visa, Amex, but for Web 3.0, you can use cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ether. So that's an introduction to Web 3.0 and how it works and why it's so important. Now is a great time to become a Web 3.0 programmer or a blockchain programmer because you are in early while Web 3.0 is still being developed. So you're learning all these tools, how to build websites that use Web 3.0 technology, how to build tools that use blockchain technology, and you're doing it at an early time. So you'll be all set to go and you'll have in-demand skills by these companies that are starting to integrate Web 3.0. Companies typically integrate a tool if all the competitors are doing it or if it's going to save them money. And therefore, because Web 3.0 does save money and competitors are starting to adapt Web 3.0 and blockchain technology, more and more companies are going to start adapting and adopting Web 3.0. Don't forget to check out our Kickstarter, Hello Coding 4.0. First link in the description.